What is something that both everything and nothing are? This question has haunted me ever since I was a kid. And in the middle of ninth grade math class, the answer came to me. Everything is a set. Everything is a collection of constituent parts. And those parts are collections of even more parts. A mechanical clock is a set of gears and springs interacting in a particular manner. Those gears and springs are sets of materials constructed in a useful fashion. We can break down those materials into sets of more sets and repeat this process indefinitely. On the other hand, nothing is also a set. That is, the set of no things, the empty set. What this realization means is that anything you can think of can be described by sets, including the things you can't touch, the abstract. This is useful in many ways. For instance, try to visualize a four-dimensional space. If you can, come talk to me. There's some important people who would like to meet you. <laughs> but if you can't, like the rest of us, you're in luck. With sets, you don't have to see a fourth dimension to begin to think about it and understand it. Sets give us a vocabulary to describe the abstract. They give us words to make sentences and express relationships between things we can't simply show or point to. Now, there's two languages that we as a species have come up with over the years to articulate the abstract. That is art and science. And there is one crucial subset of these two languages that helps us translate between them, math. Now, it's not so hard to see why math is a science. There's two things that make a field a science. First, that every proposition made in the name of the science is falsifiable by counter evidence. And second, that any finding of the science can be independently derived. My science is your science. In math, you can make conjectures and hypotheses that can be falsified through counter examples or contradiction. For the second condition, you can arrive at any mathematical theorem by reconstructing a proof yourself. So my math is your math. Math is a science. However, it's not so obvious why math is an art. But if you start to look at it through this lens, that art is a language of the abstract, it starts to make a little more sense. Fractals are patterns that repeat themselves at every scale. Their beauty derives from the symmetry and sophistication of their design. Fractals are works of art in and of themselves, and constructing them is a mathematical process. By doing math, you are making art. But beauty aside, fractals are at their essence just patterns. And what is art but just patterns that matter to us? Phrases of the abstract. Take a look at the Mona Lisa. You might have seen this painting before, but have you ever wondered what makes it so special? Well, for one thing, it exhibits a mathematical property that the ancient Greeks and da Vinci himself regarded as the basis for beauty and perfection. It satisfies a golden spiral, which is a spiral whose growth factor is the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is a proportion that appears everywhere throughout nature from the veins in a leaf to the double helix structure of our DNA. You can find the golden ratio and other mathematical motifs everywhere throughout the history of art and even in your own work. You might not have realized it, but when you make art, when you make something beautiful, you are doing math. You are making something mathematical. You are speaking the abstract. Now, there's one more consideration to make about math being an art, and that is, does math require creativity? And the answer is absolutely. If you were to take a panel of artists and ask them to paint you an apple, each would give you a different result, unique to their own style and influence. Likewise, if you were to ask a mathematician 
to prove a mathematical theorem. Each would prove the theorem or illustrate the truth of the theorem in their own uh, signature way of thinking. Some will have convoluted and unsatisfying proofs, while others will have simple, elegant, and illuminating proofs that allow you to appreciate the beauty in math. Mathematicians of this later kind are what we call virtuosos, and they achieve this level of mastery through practice, like any other artist in any other art. So what does this mean for you? It means that when you want to solve a problem, when you want to think abstractly, you can use math to refocus your way of thinking. Say you want to build something that can fly, and you're a scientific type, so you observe how nature solves a problem first. You notice that dolphins are especially fit to swim through water, a fluid just like air. So you model your first prototype after a dolphin. What you have arrived at is a crude airplane. It works, but not very well, because water is different from air. So you use math to refine and polish your design until it works elegantly and beautifully. What you have done is make a work of art, and in the process, you have done considerable science, all with the Rosetta Stone of math. So what does this mean for me? It means that the universe is a infinite mathematical painting. It means that airplanes are dolphins in the sky. It means that the truth lies in the patterns of nature, and that as our languages of the abstract evolve, we will only learn more and more about it. Math, to me, is more than just a tool. It's the lens through which I see the world, and it's what inspires me to surge ahead. Thank you.